What is up everyone? It's Sir Deathvids, and today I'm going to be teaching you how I paint Crimson Slaughter Chaos Cultists. Right before I start this tutorial, I just want to say that this paint scheme is based loosely upon the apathetic fishes, and he has a really good channel, so you should check him out. His link will be in the description below. Now it's time for the first step. The first step after priming your models is to add the base coat of the skin because you want to work from the inside outwards. And if you're wondering why there's some yellow paint all stuck on it, uh, I had originally tried doing the skin in a yellow years ago and then tried putting Agrax Earthshade and then they looked like the Simpsons so I tried stripping them with simple green and then I was impatient with it and now they're stuck like this. Won't matter. But you want to take Bugman's Glow, water it down just slightly so that you can apply a thin base coat for the skin. And since I'm layering it on a dark color, I might have to do it a few times. You're really just trying to spread this everywhere because this is your first base coat. It's your skin base coat. As you can see, I have base coated the skin. I'll wait for this to dry. The second step is to paint the robe if they have it on. Some of the guys, like this guy, do not have robes on. They just have pants. You could either do this kind of in an administratum gray or in mechanicus standard gray. Depends on whether you want a darker tone or if you want it to look kind of sandy-ish. I like to give my robes some variation because not everyone is going to be equipped with the exact same color because they'll have different kinds of cloth and depending on which members have converted to chaos at what time, what materials they had. Yeah, there's lots of factors. I am doing this robe in Mechanicus Standard Gray for the base coat. I'm taking this slowly, even though I don't need to. So that's the basic process of how to paint the robe, and I'm going to get back to you once I have finished base coating it. After that robe is dried, I'm going to paint the hood of the model. That's one of the most defining features about the Crimson Slaughter Chaos Space Marines, is that red hood. The base coat for that is Mephestin Red. Look at how much better that model looks already. So you can see how adding just a tiny bit of color increases the whole look of the model. We're trying just to give it a light coat. We aren't trying to make it look super bright and vibrant just because we want the model to look toned down and dusty, dirty. I'll spin this model around so that you can see the hood. Yeah, that's the base coat for the hood. After the hood, the next step is to paint the weapons. I like to do this in lead belcher. Just lightly brush it over it. You can see how shiny the weapons are. On to the next step. The next step after the weapons is to do the gas mask and the boots. For this, I'm using Rhinox Hide. Just cover kind of all the areas. Gas mask and just be careful not to get too much on the hood. I'm not sure if this will show up on the camera or not, but I did the gas mask in Rhinox Hide, as well as the boots, and also one little pouch. Now that we have painted the uh, gas mask, we are also going to paint all the pouches. For this, I am using Mornfang Brown. So anywhere where there's a little pouch. Just paint over that. Try not to get it too much on the cloak. Also make sure to try and do underneath and above the pouches. So as you can see, I have painted all these pouches around him and his little belt too. And the next step is to paint the pants. Like on this guy. For that, I am using rust gray. For the pants, you just want to do the same thing that you've been doing, just base coat that whole area just really quickly it doesn't have to be perfect or anything it just has to be nice thin coat and then we'll put a wash over it over this whole model 
at the end and it'll look really really good for being such a simple paint scheme. You can see now that I've finished base coating those pants and the next step will be to add a layer to the skin. For the layer of the skin you could either use Rackarth Flesh or Kidding Flesh Tone. It depends on whether you want the guy to look sickly or whether you want him to look kind of more normal. I honestly prefer to make them look sickly and all white and ghostly like this guy. And you might just want to leave a little bit of Bugman's glow in the recesses but otherwise you can just pretty much highlight the whole thing. After the skin you want to do the little decorations and stuff like the chain mail and then the boots on this guy we can do in Mephestin red the belt will be in brown Mornfang brown I believe that I've already done the belt and that one part of the boots but I'll need to do the red part of it to show you what the boots together looks like and I'm just kind of switching in between two models here just because it's the most efficient way for me to make a video really quickly for the other part of the boots I'm using the uh, I'm actually using corn red you could also use Mephestin red doesn't really matter These boots go up quite high. I'm pretty sure th that you get the concept though. You just want to add a little bit of contrast between the brown and red. And it makes it look really, really cool. Now I guess there's nothing else to do but start applying washes. As you can see, I repeated the steps that I used on the other model on this one. So that I could show you how the wash looks and turn it into a finished model. I know that I did mess up on that sword there and I got a little bit of flesh there. But we're going to fix that up when we pick out the fine details because after we do the washes then we're going to do the eyes kind of and then pick out the little details or fix up some stuff but with the Reichland flesh shade there's really no wrong way to do it you literally just smear it all over it and then it goes into all the cracks and it looks good and you may have to do multiple coats depending on what type of look you want the skin to be and then we'll let that one dry. But in the meantime, we're going to use Nuln Oil on the pants. And the sword, just to darken everything up. Significantly. You could also use uh, watered down black paint. Just look at that detail though, that's picking out. going to get all of the boots too. Just don't apply it too heavy of a wash that it sinks down in giant droplets. So you can see how much the shade has affected the model. So now I'm just going to go in the skin areas with the known oil. Just kind of coat the whole model in it. Make it look dark and gross. If you apply too heavy a coat doesn't really matter you can just smear it elsewhere which is really good with shades that's why I kind of like them they're easy to use and it's also really really good it has a really good effect now we will let that dry and do the finishing details and the final step is to just refine some of the details and make some of the things stand out just a little bit. So the bracelets and the little chaos symbol are going to be Balthazar Gold. And I think I'll also do a little bit of gold on the gun. Maybe the hand grip. And then I'm just taking my lead belcher going over the sword.
This guy has a whole bunch of spines on his back. Metal spines on the other figure like this. I made them kind of gross, pustule looking things. But on this one I'm making it what they have in the pictures. Just a whole bunch of metal spikes all over him. And then for the eye, I'm doing that in Zerius Purple. On the other one, I did it in a bright, bright red. And if you get excess on there, just kind of dab it off with a paper towel. Looks like the eye's glowing. That's cool. And the last step is to do the basing. I said that the details were the last step, but technically the basing is. For my Chaos Cultus, the type of basing that I'm using is little stones. Fine turf. And sand. Just take your PVA glue. Spread it on the base using an older paintbrush. Put a dab on there. Smear it around. And then you want to take your and you want to take a few larger rocks. And sprinkle it on. That's what it looks like without the other flocking on it. And you just kind of want to put it in the sand. Put sand on it. And finally, put on a pinch of fine turf. And that should fill in all the gaps. So that is how I paint Chaos Cultus. Thank you everyone so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video, because I spent a lot of time on it. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.